subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Tardigrades have fascinated scientists ever since they were discovered. The tiny creatures were first discovered in 1773 by German zoologist Johann August Ephraim Goes, who gave them the nickname of Little Water Bears. Since then, they have been found everywhere on Earth. From hot springs in the Himalayas to the deep sea, from hot and humid tropical rainforests to the freezing Antarctic. The animals have the ability to survive extreme conditions, be it extreme temperatures or extreme pressures, radiation, dehydration and even starvation. These abilities have allowed the water bears to survive exposure to outer space. Whatever would quickly kill most other known forms of life, tardigrades have survived, which is what makes the animals so fascinating for scientists. Now, a team of researchers from the Rockefeller University have observed how tardigrades walk and run using its eight tiny legs and opened up new insights into the evolution of these animals. In this episode, I talk about how tardigrades walk and the physics behind their gait. I will also talk about why understanding how these tiny animals go about their business is an important field of research and its implication on evolutionary science and robotics. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Tardigrades are plump, barrel-shaped creatures with four pairs of stubby legs. Usually, the animals are between 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters in length, although the largest species may reach up to 1.2 millimeters. This means that a tardigrade appears to be a tiny speck to the naked eye, but will be easily visible under a low-power microscope. The body of a tardigrade consists of a head followed by three body segments, each of which has a pair of legs. The tail segment has the fourth pair of legs. These legs do not have any joints, while the feet have four to eight claws each. Such a build raises the question of why tardigrades evolved to walk at all. Animals as small and soft as tardigrades usually do not have legs, and they almost never evolved to walk. One such example is roundworms, a parasite that is usually just a few millimeters long. Roundworms move by slithering or thrashing about. Their bodies are so soft and malleable that they are able to propel themselves forward without the use of legs, irrespective of the medium through which they are moving. Usually, the evolution of legs in animals is linked to the habitat they live in. The evolution of legs began about 400 million years ago. Although it is still an active area of research and debate among paleontologists today, most scientists agree that the earliest animals with legs evolved from lobe-finned fishes, which are bony fish with fleshy paired fins, which are joined to the body with a single bone. Based on some evidence, it is presumed that the earliest of these animals with legs walked along the bottoms of shallow bodies of water while dragging their bellies along. The specific evolutionary process by which animals moved out of the water to the land remains unclear. Thus, the fact that tardigrades use their stubby legs to propel themselves through all kinds of materials, from marine and freshwater sediment to desert dunes and beneath the soil, theoretically, it appears to be improbable. In the latest study published in the journal PNAS, the scientists analyzed tardigrade walks. What the team found was that the water bears walk in a manner most closely resembling that of insects that are 500,000 times their size. Unlike round worms, these creatures do not clumsily stumble around on sand and soil. Rather, they have a clear way of moving, just like larger, hard-bodied insects. The similarities between their walks and that of much larger insects opens up several very interesting evolutionary questions. The discovery can imply two things. The first is that insects with exoskeletons and these squishy water bears have a common ancestor. 
or that there is an evolutionary advantage in this type of a walk, which is why two completely unrelated species separately evolved to adopt it. For the study, researcher Jasmine Nirodi and her colleagues first determined how the water bears walk and run. In Nirodi's words, the team did not have to force the tardigrades to do anything. Watching these creatures under the microscope for a long enough time revealed a wide range of behavior. Sometimes the water bears would simply stroll around. At other times, they'd see something they'd like and run towards it. At their most leisurely, water bears move at about half a body length per second. When running at full speed, their long strides carried them two body lengths in the same amount of time. The team says that what surprised them was to see how a water bear's feet contact the ground as it gains momentum. Vertebrates have distinct gates for each speed. For example, when a horse walks, its legs follow this sequence. Left hind leg, left front leg, right hind leg, right front leg, in a regular 1, 2, 3, 4 beat. But when it trots, the horse moves its legs in unison in diagonal pairs. A canter and a gallop is a three-beat gait. Basically, a horse's gait changes as it transitions from a walk to a gallop. But tardigrades run more like insects. Even as they scurry at increasing speeds, their basic stepping patterns do not change. Coming back to the question of why tardigrades resemble much larger hard-bodied insects when it comes to their gait. Tardigrades are so unique that they have been assigned their own phylum called tardigrada. Phylum in biology is a level of classification just below kingdom. So, for example, the creatures in the animal kingdom are classified into different phyla such as arthropoda, which include invertebrate animals having an exoskeleton, a segmented body, and a pair of joint appendages, or nematoda, which include round worms. But this study may indicate that tardigrades actually share a common ancestor with insects such as fruit flies, ants, and other segmented creatures, which fall under arthropods. In fact, some scientists advocate classifying tardigrades within a new panarthropod clade, a group that would assign common shell space to insects, crustaceans, velvet worms, and water bears. The other possibility, which I mentioned before, is that there is no ancestral connection between tardigrades and arthropods. Instead, it is possible that unrelated groups of organisms independently arrived at the same walking and running strategy because they were evolutionarily advantages. So perhaps the best way to navigate unpredictable terrain with a microscopic body is the way that water bears are doing it. Both possibilities are equally fascinating and leave us with a lot to learn. Beyond answering questions about evolutionary biology and the study of animal movements, the findings may also have implications for the developing field of soft and micro-robotics. Nature has always been the best teacher for science and the field of robotics often relies on being able to recreate what is already observed in nature. So, by understanding the physics of how small animals evolved to move across all types of terrains, scientists may be able to design robots that can more efficiently squeeze into small spaces or operate at the micro scale, irrespective of the environmental conditions. The research team points out that there is very little known in the extremes of locomotion, that is, how to make an efficient small walker or how soft-bodied things should move. Tardigrades can end up closing this gap in knowledge. This is Mohana Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.